Professor Dave and Chegg here, an interesting aspect of organic molecules is that they can join together to form polymers. These are long chain-like molecules consisting of many repeats of a small subunit called a monomer. Let's learn about these now. The best way to learn about polymers is by examining the different types of polymers so that we can see the monomers they are comprised of and how they link together. Ethene can polymerize to form polyethylene. This is just thousands of fully saturated CH2 units perpetuating, like a never-ending straight-chain alkane. This substance is a flexible plastic with many applications. If we replace the hydrogen atoms on ethene with fluorine atoms and then allow this to polymerize, we get a material called Teflon. This is what gives certain containers their non-stick coating because the CF bonds are quite inert. They are almost entirely unreactive, making the material tough and non-flammable. Here is a table depicting many other synthetic polymers according to the monomers they are comprised of. Some of them may sound familiar, and their applications will certainly be familiar, as these materials are ubiquitous. Polymerization can occur by a variety of mechanisms. Sometimes they go by addition polymerization, which is a radical mechanism, meaning that it employs radical intermediates, which have unpaired electrons. Another mechanism is condensation polymerization, where each time two monomers are joined, a water molecule is lost. A homopolymer is one in which there is only one repeating monomeric unit. A copolymer is one in which there are two different monomers that must combine to form the chain. Nylon is an example of a copolymer. Polyethylenes are some of the most important polymers, and there are two forms, low-density polyethylene, or LDPE, and high-density polyethylene, or HDPE. The low-density variety is as such because of the extensive branching, which causes the molecule to not be able to pack together as tightly as for the high-density variety, which is comprised predominantly of straight-chain molecules. With these compounds, if a substituent is present, like this methyl group, this can result in an isotactic chain, where the methyl groups are all on the same side of the molecule, or an atactic chain, where they alternate from one side to the other, as is depicted with these dash and wedge bonds. If the substituent is a chlorine atom, we get polyvinyl chloride, or PVC. If the substituent is a phenyl group, meaning a benzene ring, we get polystyrene. If styrene monomers are combined with some other monomer to make a copolymer, we can get a variety of other useful polymers with various applications. With that, we have taken a glimpse into the incredible world of polymers, which have transformed the way we make industrial materials. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.